Has your shiny new graphics card been acting slower than advertised? If so, it's either a result of misleading advertisements or bottlenecking. In this video, I will be showing you how to identify if your system is bottlenecking, and if so, how to, I could say, reduce the bottleneck. Hello everyone, I am Duo from How To Compute, and as previously said, I will be talking about bottlenecking and how to reduce it. Just a quick disclaimer before I start, I will only be talking about CPU and GPU bottleneck in this video. So if you're having issues with other forms of bottleneck such as SSD bottleneck, then I would recommend looking elsewhere. So if you're watching this video, you likely know what bottlenecking is, therefore I will not bother wasting time talking about it. However, to those of you who are unfamiliar with it, I will probably leave a link in the description if I remember to an article which explains bottlenecking pretty well. So let's get into how to identify the bottlenecking in your system. First of all, you will need a program which is measuring your GPU and CPU usage. Task Manager could easily measure the CPU's usage, however it is impractical in measuring the GPU usage as it does not do that at all. I would recommend MSI Afterburner for measuring both your CPU and GPU, it is completely free and safe and it can also measure other things such as CPU and GPU temperatures. And not only that, you can also use it to bump up your fan and clock speed of your GPU. However, I have not tried this myself as I do not want to get stuck into some thermal issues. The next part is much easier if you have dual monitors. You want to play a game which is GPU intensive. This will ensure for most cards that it hits the 100% utilization cap. If you have dual monitors or more, put the GPU monitoring application on the external monitor while playing the game on your main monitor and occasionally look at your external monitor to check the GPU and CPU usage. If you only have a singular monitor, fear not as simply alt-tabbing out of a game occasionally to check will also do the trick. If your GPU is not at 100% load, then it could mean you are bottlenecking. However, if you have a high-end card, make sure all settings are bumped up if they weren't already and see if the GPU load is any different. And even try going as far as trying to stretch the game across multiple monitors if possible. Or if you are very simplistic and want a quick way to do it, you can always look at benchmarks for the card and see how different the frames are compared to yours. However, the only way to get rid of a bottleneck entirely is to analyse which component is causing the bottleneck and upgrade that specific component. Now this could be a pretty expensive solution. If you cannot afford that remedy, I would recommend overclocking either the CPU or GPU dependent on which is causing the bottleneck. Now this is supposing you have a sufficient power supply and cooling system. If you have an AMD FX CPU or an Intel CPU marked with a K at the end of its number, then it can be overclocked fairly easily. If you have an Intel Skylake, I repeat, Skylake CPU without a K on the end of its name, there is still a way to overclock. There is a video of this which I will also provide in the link of the description below. If you have a Skylake CPU, you will need a Z170 motherboard in order to utilize a K at the end of your CPU in the first place. If you have a non-Skylake, non-K Intel CPU or an AMD CPU that is not unlocked, then unfortunately I don't think there is any way to overclock your CPU. However, that is not to say that it cannot be overclocked at all. If you are unsure, see if you can find any way to overclock your CPU via a simple Google search. Okay, I have to add a disclaimer in this video. If your power supply is close to that of what your PC currently consumes, do not overclock. Overclocking increases the power consumption of your CPU. It would not be drastic, but I would still not take the risk. Similarly, before overclocking, monitor your CPU's current temperatures while using highly power-hungry games or applications. As previously mentioned, MSI Afterburner is a good tool for measuring temperatures, However, IDA64 is a good tool as well. Most CPUs can reach temperatures of around 90 to 100 degrees Celsius before thermal throttling. If your CPU's temperature ends up similar to this without overclocking, I would not recommend that either. Also, if your heat sink keeps your PC fairly cool, but is extremely loud, unless you can withstand your PC sounding like a jet without going insane, 
I also wouldn't recommend it purely for the sake of your sanity. So if you did enjoy or found this video helpful, please be sure to leave a like, comment and maybe even subscribe for more. But anyway guys, this is How To Compute and we will catch you all next time.